guys, welcome to Southern Gal True Crime, um, where we cover missing persons, solved cases, unsolved cases, a few infamous cases, and more. And today, um, I have a missing person case that I want to bring to you. Um, very important. That's the uh, most important thing that I want to do here on the channel is to bring information about our missing persons and unsolved cases. Um, and today's uh, missing person is Jason, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce his last name right, Lurl, it's spelled L-I-E-R-L. -E um, he went missing around the end of January of last year, so it's not too long ago. I'm from Benton County, Arkansas. Um, and the basic information I'm going to give to you is from FBI.gov. And here is, I have some better pictures I'm on here of Jason, but this is kind of big, hard to see on the screen. Um, but his basic information, alright, here's the, um, make them a little bit bigger, the pictures here. This one where uh, first one has got a very short haircut, um, and then very important he has two tattoos. One, um, the one there on the left is they call it an iron cross, and then the second one says cross one eleven twelve, and I'm assuming that's a date, an important date um, for Jason. And the last one there. Um, Looks like he's swimming. Um, you can kind of see the tattoo there. Alright, so let's get to Jason's information. Okay, it says his date of birth used. So I don't know if that's his actual birth date. March 17th, 1980. He was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. He has brown hair, blue eyes. Um, five foot six inches tall, 160 pounds, um, and he is a white male. Um, scars and marks. Um, Jason has a tattoo of the words cross 11112 on his right forearm and a tattoo of an iron cross on the side of his right bicep. And um, those are the tattoos that I showed you um, just a while ago. Um, and I will put a link. Um, to this um, in the description section so you can go and um, get a better look at the pictures. Alright, let's see what it has to say. The FBI is offering a reward of up to $30,000 for information leading to the location and recovery of Jason Lurl. That's the pronunciation I'm going to go with. Um, the FBI in Arkansas is seeking information regarding the disappearance of Jason last seen between the area of Caps Ranches Road in Benton County, Arkansas and County Road 1101 in Madison County, Arkansas around January 25th, 2022. After Jason's disappearance, some of his belongings were recovered by law enforcement in the following locations. Fayetteville, Arkansas, Benton County, Arkansas, Madison County, Arkansas, and Eagle Rock, Missouri. Um, if you have any information concerning this case, please contact the FBI in Little Rock at 501-221-9100 um, or you can call um, your local um, FBI office, wherever you may be. All right. And I also found an article. I always try to find articles, um, mainly with uh, maybe interviews with family members or articles that have a little bit more information and details. And I found an article um, with an interview um, from his sister that I wanted to read to you. So let me go and find it. Oh, there it is, right there. Right, let me refresh the page. Okay. And this comes from the Northwest Arkansas homepage dot com. And it says missing in Arkansas, Jason 
Laurel, and this was posted eight months ago. Go away, Ed. All right. Oh, come on. These ads drive me crazy. All right. Um, Madison County, Arkansas. Um, for the last five months, Madison County investigators have been searching for Jason Laurel. It was Jason and I who grew up together, Sarah Wood said. And Sarah um, is Jason's sister. Wood and her brother, Jason, haven't spoken to each other since late um, January. The last text message that I received from, from him, she said, I almost wondered if they even came from Jason. So, I don't, you know, apparently she knows her brother and um, his text, his, you know, because everybody has certain ways of speaking or texting. You just know that it's them. Um, but apparently something may have been a little off um, that made her think that the text wasn't from Jason. Um, Jason hasn't been seen or heard from since. There are so many people who have given up that hope, Wood said. I don't know what my life is going to look like without Jason. <sighs> Once again, um, that breaks my heart. And Not only are the victims important, but the victims um, or missing persons, family members, and loved ones are important. Um, I have two younger brothers. If anything ever happened to either one of them, it would be um, devastating to me. So I can understand um, how she feels. Um, Madison County Sheriff's Deputy Stephen Brown is tasked with retracing Jason's last steps. He says Jason's belongings have been found all over northwest Arkansas, including keys, a car, and a motorcycle. So apparently he was on, well, I don't know if he was on a car, in a car, or on a motorcycle, or both. Um, but apparently they found um, a car and a motorcycle. And we had to go back and figure out who he knew and, knew and who knew him and go from there and see what they know, Brown said. The car was found parked outside of Northwest Arkansas Mall in Fayetteville. And police searched it in early February. There were things of evidentiary interest that were found, Brown said. Some of those things were sent to the Arkansas State Crime Lab and were await and we're awaiting results on some of those things. Wood and her family stood just feet away watching the search unfold, holding their breath. I just can't imagine having to do that not knowing what you're going to find she says what if our brother is in the trunk of this car and that would be absolutely horrifying and I know unfortunately um, things like that have happened in other cases uh, with family members right there and I just cannot imagine some you know anyway uh, Jason's motorcycle was parked outside of an acquaintance's house near Clifty in Madison County. So apparently, I'm assuming the motorcycle and the car belong to Jason. And they're found in two different places. Um, my brother would say that they were friends, Wood said. How good of friends? I don't know if that's really, excuse me, easy to determine. Jason's acquaintances that he was last believed to be with, it's a tight circle of people, but they have a wide footprint, Brown added. Don't know exactly what that means, but... Wood says that Jason battled drug addiction. Um, she and her son Brandon, Jason's nephew, fear he relapsed around the time he disappeared. Throughout the month of January, he came upon some very dark times, and unfortunately, I think he turned back to some things that were in Madison County, Brendan said. And I think Brendan is one of the friends. Some people he, perhaps, maybe he shouldn't have been around. So maybe something happened that triggered um, a relapse in his drug use, because that does happen. Um, 
but we should not judge addiction um we all know how or should be aware of addiction and how hard it is um to beat that addiction whatever addiction it may be um wood who is jason's sister turn to social media for help a page made to spread awareness about her brother's disappearance quickly attracted thousands of followers and several theories about what may have happened and we always have to be careful when it comes to theories because we don't we don't have all the information that law enforcement has so it's better not to make um, assumptions um, the stories that I've heard from so many different people about my brother's disappearance have been so off the wall. They're just crazy that it, they do not make any sense. Absolutely. That's the one. Social media can do a lot of good, but flip side, it can also lead to, like she says, outlandish and off the wall, just crazy nonsense, basically. And that drives me crazy. As a person on this channel, I, I strive and hope that I give, you know, the facts to the best of my knowledge, um, straightforward, no crazy theories, um, speculation. Um, that's what I strive here for on this channel, just to give basic information to help get the word out about these cases. Um, we have a lot of, of information to go through, Brown said. The sheriff's office says one of Jason's friends reported he was last seen walking down a road in the Chana's Corner area in Huntsville. Brown says their, fo their focus is on rur rural northwestern Madison County, and the most recent search was just a few weeks ago. And there's a pit, the missing poster for Jason. Um, in a big city, you have a lot of people, typically, Brown said. A lot of people, you have a lot of eyes. A lot of eyes, you get more information. Out here in the country, it's not like that. And I can attest to that fact. I live in the country, rural area, very small town. Um, on one hand, it's good because most people know each other. Um, in a small town, so they'll notice if something's off or if somebody has not been seen um, for a few days or whatever, whatever the case may be. But then again, like they said, you don't have it as many eyes and it may go unnoticed. Okay, um, as, the, as the investigation continues, Wood and her family are once again left holding their breath. We don't know whether it's time to mourn or if we should have hope that he's going to come back, Brendan stated. He's a great brother, a great father, Wood said. He deserves to be found. Absolutely, everybody deserves to be found, no matter what the case may be, what problems or issues, everybody deserves to be found and to be remembered. The sheriff's office says it has identified several persons of interest. It's also still waiting for the results from the crime lab, which investigators say could take years. Years. And I understand crime labs are very backed up. They do the very best they can, but it's still hard on the family the longer that, that you have to wait. Um, Wood is offering a $10,000 reward for anyone who finds her brother. If you have any information as to where Jason could be, call the Madison County Sheriff's Office at 479-738-2320. All right, so that, let me go back down to this picture of Jason. All right, here is the missing, oh, missing poster for Jason. from 4029tv.com
and uh, we'll give you the latest information on this case. It says search continues. Get rid of that. Search continues for missing kayakers on Beaver Lake. Um, Garfield, Arkansas. Search crews are out on Beaver Lake looking for a father and son who were reported missing Thursday during a kayaking trip. The father and son have been identified as 47-year-old Charles Norris and 20-year-old Charlie Norris. And I read um, in an art another article I'd found on this story, the father, um, Charles, was actually a former drummer in the band Lotus. And I did not know, was not familiar with this band, um, so I had to look it up. Um, they were, or are, are still, even though, um, Mr. Norris, I don't believe is, he's not in the band anymore. They are, um, an instrumental electronic kind of techno band. Um, apparently they were very popular in the nineties. So that's probably why I've never heard of them. Cause in the nineties I was listening to the, the hair bands and the grunge. So. I just thought that was interesting about um, the father. Okay, we shall continue. A family friend said they are in Arkansas for a family spring, ba spring break vacation. The two were last seen near the Lost Bridge area of the lake. We've got Benton County Sheriff's Office. We've got our dive team our search and, rescue, and our search and rescue teams, Lieutenant Shannon Jenkins said. Lieutenant Jenkins with the Benton County Sheriff's Office said deputies suspended the search Thursday night because of the weather. And Thursday it was very rainy and stormy here, which makes it, of course, very difficult to search in those conditions. Um, the father and son were visiting northwest Arkansas from Kansas City, Missouri. Lieutenant Jenkins said one kayak and one jacket were found Thursday, and a second kayak was found on Friday morning. Temperatures dip, dipped below freezing at the lake Thursday into Friday. So, yes, it has been very cold here the last few days and into the weekend. The cold temperatures and high winds have made the search more difficult on search teams and dive crews. The wind was definitely not in our favor, Lieutenant Jenkins said. A lot can happen with that out here on the lake. The Sheriff's Office is asking any boaters or people who live in the area to keep a lookout for the kayakers. Family friends are also asking anyone who goes hiking in the area this weekend to keep an eye out for the two men. If you have any information, you're asked to call 911 or the Benton County Sheriff's Office. And of course, this is a developing story. So hopefully, um, the weather's cleared up now. Um, hopefully, the uh, law enforcement searchers and volunteers can get back out and resume their searching. And hopefully, best case scenario, find these two gentlemen safe. Unfortunately, that's not always the case, but we will pray for the best. All right, so that's the first missing person story I want to bring you. And I also have this other story. Let me refresh so it won't freak out on me, hopefully. Um, earlier this week, um, there was a young man, um, Fredarius Wilson, um, who went missing. Um, I believe he had gone out to a movie or somewhere with one of his friends, um, never came home. Um, and a few days later, his remains were found in a wooded area um, in Missouri. So that's what I was saying earlier about it. it's ironic that these two missing persons um, stories both overlap from Arkansas into Missouri. But now... The latest information is four people have been charged with the murder of this young man. So that is fantastic news um, that they have did their investigations and um, 
charge these four alleged offenders as of right now um, with the killing of this young man. So this article article comes from WREG.com, and it says, four charged with murder, get rid of the ad, um, four charged with murder of West Memphis teen, and there's a picture of the young man. Memphis, Tennessee, four people have been charged with the murder of 18-year-old Frederius Wilson, the West Memphis, Arkansas teen whose body was found in a Mississippi forest after he was reported missing earlier this month. Alicia Jackson, 22, Brandon Jackson, 23, Braylon Jackson, 22, and Devin Smith, 27, are charged with first-degree murder in the case, and all of them are from Coffeeville, Mississippi. They are currently in custody with bonds set at $1 million each. County records show Alicia, ja Alicia Jackson, whose first name is Lavania, is married to Braylon Jackson. And here is a picture of, <coughs> excuse me, Brandon Jackson on the left and Braylon Jackson on the right. All right. Um, I don't know where my other picture went. Oh, well, it's not showing up. But Alicia Jackson, Alicia Jackson and Devin Smith are the other two that have been charged with this crime. Reports say Wilson was shot multiple times and the crime was not random. It appears that the victim knew at least one of the suspects, District Attorney J. Hale said. While investigators are unwilling to say how Wilson and the suspects may be connected, Wilson's mother confirmed to WREG that he worked with Alicia Jackson at FedEx. So that's interesting. One can, there's a, allegedly a connection um, according to um, the mother of the victim. According to a police report, Wilson's mother said she last saw her son in West Memphis on March 5th before he went to the movies with a classmate. She said he tried she tried to call Wilson when she woke up at 11 p.m. that night. Investigators were able to ping Wilson's phone and determined it was in the Holly Springs National Forest in Yellow Yalabusha County, Mississippi. Um, his body was found in the forest on March 8th. The case has been a collaborative effort from multiple law enforcement agencies, um, from the Yalabusha County Sheriff to the West Memphis Police, which officials believe likely made the difference in the outcome. So that is great that all these different agencies can come together to solve this case quickly. Our guys have been working day and night, County Sheriff Jermaine Gooch said. A lot of times they would have, uh, they would get two to three hours of sleep, if that, and they would go home at three, three four, five o'clock in the morning and get right back up and get back to work. Wilson's mother praised law enforcement officers' efforts and said Thursday she's pleased with this outcome. The West Memphis Police Department released the following statement expressing their condolences to Wilson's family and asking the community to support his family during this time. Absolutely. The family needs all the support they can get right now to make it through this very devastating situation. The West Memphis Police Department would first and foremost like to extend our condolences to the family of Frederius Wilson. No parent should have to bury their children, especially under these unfortunate circumstances. Secondly, at the onset of the investigation, detectives of the West Memphis Police Department assisted the Yalabusha County deputies with their investigation by tracking down leads and witnesses in Arkansas. In any case that spans multiple jurisdictions, it is incumbent that federal, state, 
and local agencies work together to bring justice to the family and the perpetrators of crimes before the courts. That is precisely what took place in this case. We will continue to offer any assistance to the Yellowbusha County Sheriff's Office and the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation to help ensure that justice is done and that the four suspects involved have their day in court. We ask that the community of West Memphis comes together and wraps its, its arms around the family of Frederius Wilson in their time of need. Absolutely, that was beautifully said. Um, as I say, in all these cases, not only are the victims the most important thing, but also family um, and loved ones who um, are going through this devastating time. So we will keep them in our prayers and thoughts. And as more develops, I'm sure, I don't know how long it'll take for this case to go to trial. And sometimes they don't even go to trial because plea deals are made and offers and and whatnot. So, but um, I will keep you updated with any other information concerning this case. Thank you.